the ancient Indian wisdom. What are the problems and challenges which are involved in approaching and understanding our spiritual texts, the ancient Indian wisdom? He puts together so many arguments succinctly and unemotionally. I was uh, very much inspired by the structure and the way in which he has brought the whole thing together. So one of the most important things is the very unique nature of our texts. They are not something which can be categorized into distinct compartments. This is pure religion. This is pure philosophy. This is pure story or invention. We don't have that. So there is uh, recently when we were trying to apply for ISBN for one of our books. It gives a form, it says you have to tick the category. If I take say Ramayana or Mahabharata, which category do we take? Do we say it as history, political science, philosophy, geography? There is so much, so many dimensions which are <coughs> intentionally put. It is not accidental. The texts have been intentionally structured so that we get a comprehensive, multi-dimensional knowledge about the triad, Jiva, Jagat and Ishwar. In the 18th chapter of uh, you know, the Gita, Krishna tells about the three types of Jnana, Sattvika, Rajasa and Tamasa. It's very interesting. He says, Prathakve Natuya Jnanam Nana Bhavan Prathakvidhan Vetti Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tadjnanam Vidhi Rajasam Rajasa Jnana is where we look at things separately. This is separate and this is separate. There is no connection. We don't recognize the inherent interconnectedness of things. We just look at them separately and get only partial knowledge of it. Whereas, if we look at the Tamasajnana, yattu kritsnavade kasmin kārye saktam haitukam atatvārthavadal pancha tattamasam udahritam ekasmin, there is only one thing. So I know something, that is the only truth and truth is only what I know. Anything else, if somebody does not believe in what I know, he is a traitor. They either convert or eliminate him. That is Tamasa Jnana. Whereas, Sattvika Jnana. Sarva Bhuteshu ye naikam bhavam avdhyaya mikshate avibhaktam vibhakteshu tadjnanam sattvikam smritam That which recognizes the inherent oneness that which can look beyond the superficial differences and understand the unifying principle that is Sattvika Jnana. And all our scriptures are built on the foundation of this unifying principle. Unfortunately, with uh, the deliberate reform of our educational system, which was uh, directed by Rikhale, we are now a country of a billion people, majority of whom are either unaware of what our texts are or they are apologetic and dismissive of our own intellectual tradition. The other unique feature of our texts is it is not a one-to-one -one correspondence between words and its meaning. It is not, this is the shoka and this is a single, simple one mean. It is always in layers. There is the sthula or the gross meaning and sukshma, subtle meanings. It's usually multiple. There are so many things beyond. Sometimes we even have some ati sukshma, extra fine points, which we can appreciate only after a prolonged deep contemplation under proper guidance. So how do we even start to convey these to the current generation? 
where uh, you know, one of the most popular quotes today is take a sentence, put it into Google Translate and take the output. That is the perfect meaning. It's happened actually, even forget something as uh, written uh, in the Gita. In some basic language level courses, there are some sentence I give. There are students who send a screenshot of Google Translate and say that is saying something else. What you are saying is wrong. So that is that brings us to the next problem, which is that we had a very very strong oral tradition, an unbroken tradition, which helped to complement the written word and make sure that neither the context nor the intent was missed. Right? So, we, uh, the, there is a saying, Yono Jana Sano Mahan. There are scholars who spend their entire lives dedicated to the single purpose. Learn from the Guru and pass it on faithfully to the students. That was the strength, the backbone of our parampara, which is today in shambles because of the education system. And in addition, we have also lost one key, which could have opened many secrets of our texts, which is the knowledge of Sanskrit. The ability to look into texts in their original, see what the text is saying, what the commentary is saying, Without all these, uh, I very highly recommend everybody to read that preface. Professor Mahodaya has brought so many more aspects. Finally, what has happened is, say a shloka like uh, Sarvadharma Parityajya Amekam Sharanam Praja. Very important shloka of the Gita. Acharya say Shankara have written like pages of Bhashya. In a traditional Vedanta setup, it will take like months to understand. So, what they do? Give us straight translation. You know, give up or despise all religions and go to me as a Supreme Master. There is absolutely no connection to that translation and to the original intent. So, these are all the challenges we are seeing in today's age in approaching our things. But being overwhelmed by problems or you know, not acting is not the solution. That will only put us in Arjuna's initial state, Vishada, dejection and inaction. What is needed currently is action. Right action with the right attitude, corrective action to restore the balance. And that is exactly what Professor Mahadevan has been doing untiringly for more than one and a half decade through his study group which he has initiated called Practical Vedanta Samvada at IIT. It's honestly the need of the art. Uh, again, when uh, Arjuna in the 18th chapter, he asks Krishna, what is the meaning of giving up work? Krishna's answer is paradoxical. He says, doing work continuously. Right? That which is done continuously is Tyaga. What are we doing there? Sangam Tyatva Phalan Chaiva Karya Mityeva Yad Karma Niyatam Kriyate That which is done continuously, untiringly, because it has to be done without attachment, without trying to influence a favorable result. That is the highest form of Tyaga, Sattvika Tyaga, which is exactly what we see. He has taught over the years, the entire Gita, Ramayana, Granthas, Taitiriya Upanishad, the Prakarana Granthas like Sadaka Panchakam, Manisha Panchakam, and they are doing some Upanishads now. Mundaka Upanishads and so on. And it is a true blessing that now 
We have the insights from those classes in the form of these books, which are beautifully structured and enhanced by this experience of teaching. So we have two books, both based on the Gita, which have been released today. As we said, the first book called Work, Joy and Evolution, co-authored by Professor Mahadevan and his student uh, N. Karthik Mahadeva. So this is a book, the first volume of three volumes, each of which will focus on one shatka of the Gita. In the first volume, this has the first six chapters. So the authors have taken each section of the Gita, they have analyzed the context, the dialogue, and more importantly, what are the insights from each portion of the text to our current day-to-day -day life. It is not Arjuna fighting some war somewhere. What do we do? I am not going to fight any war. I don't have any enemies whom I have to teach. So what do I do? If we think that way, the entire Gita becomes irrelevant. But Arjuna represents the day-to-day -day challenges each of us face, whether it is at work, at home, as a parent, as a uh, daughter or a son. So, how do we, how does that apply to us and how do we uh, get the solutions, how do we get practical insights for these problems. So, this is what he has been doing through the years. Right? So, teaching the students, giving them insights and solutions to their day-to-day -day problems while also opening up vistas for them to explore the texts in depth and apply it to their all-around development. The second book called The Timeless Gita, Endless Bliss. So I have seen the first volume and as a continuation we now have the second volume also to this. It is a collection of Problem statements, right? self-development, whenever we are dealing with various situations in life, what are the questions we get? How do I control my anger? How do I manage a particularly difficult situation? So, insights to those are given from one or two shlokas of the Gita. So, once we go through this book, we understand the power of the Gita, which should hopefully inspire us to study the Gita in detail where the other book will come to our aid. We are deeply grateful to Mahadevan Mahodaya for his untiring service to the cause of Dharma and Shastra. And I need to add my gratitude on two other friends here. One on behalf of our organization, Vyoma Linguistic Clubs Foundation, which she graciously chose as the publisher for the book. So the internal secret is we did nothing other than sending it to print. The entire work in ready-made form was given to us by Mahodaya. It was just, as you said, a prasada, Ishwara prasada that he has chosen us as the nimitta for this uh, seva of the Gita. He has been with our organization at every step like a parent appreciating the stumbling first steps of a child, he has been a constant source of encouragement, support and guidance. So we convey our gratitude to him. And uh, ask me on a personal note, honestly when Arthik Mahadaya called to invite us, I was extremely embarrassed. <laughs> I mean there is uh, no way we are qualified or eligible in any way uh, to be here and to say I am launching the book. It is exactly like Pradeepa Jala Bhi, Divasakara Nirajana Bhi, trying to show light along to the sun. That is exactly what it is. But on reflection, this is also a blessing on us. He thought of us and he gave us this opportunity to do some manana and uh, be a part of this divine occasion. We are again extremely grateful to him. I 
look forward to the remaining workrooms coming out very soon. And Sadhana. Uh, Start from where Swamya left. That is, whether we are qualified to launch this book. So, when Kartik ji told that uh, it is the Agnya of uh, Professor Mahadevan ji that we as a Dampati come and launch this book, then I was uh, thinking about any precedent. Aham chintayen na asam. Yata evam vayasa anubhavena vidyaya vayam kaniyamsa. I was looking for a precedent or any reference in Shastra in this regard. Then, by the grace of Guru, I was reminded of a shloka written by the great Acharya Vachaspati Mishra. He has, uh, he, uh, Acharya Vachaspati Mishra, who lived in 9th, 10th century, <coughs> he has written commentaries to all the darshanas, commentary or sub-commentaries to all the Shad Astika darshanas. So, in his uh, uh, Tika to Shankaracharya's uh, Bhashya to Brahma Sutra, in the beginning he writes a shloka. His Tika is called as a Bhamati. There is a story about Bhamati, also I will not tell that. <laughs> you can learn about that later. In the beginning of Bhamati, he writes a shloka. Acharya Kriti Niveshanam Api Avadhutam Vachaha Asmada Dinam Ratyodakamiva Ganga Pravaha Pataha Pavitrayati. He reflects upon Am I qualified to write a, write a comment or comment upon Acharya Shankara's Bhashya? So, in that regard, then he thinks that okay, no problem. Also, he expresses that I will write the commentary on the great Acharya Shankara's commentary. Then what if my words are improper or inadequate or illogical or not sufficient enough? Then he himself convinces himself by saying that no problem. See, what happens is when the rains, just now great rains happened in uh, Chennai and uh, in the southern part of Tamil Nadu. So when the rains come, then what happens? There is in some places calm water drain is good, some other places the storm water, gutter water, everything gets mixed. Think of Varanasi. Huh? What is the great river there? Ganga. Okay. Then what happens? The great Ganga timelessly flows there, and then the water of the gutter, it what happens? It also joins the Ganga. Ratyodakamiva, Ratya Udakam. Ratya means the path. So the water that flows in the storm or drain etc, it joins the Ganga. When the uh, storm water or the gutter water joins Ganga, what happens to the gutter water? It also becomes Ganga. So, Vajaspati Mishra, he says, Ratyodakamiva Ganga Pravaha Pata Pavitrayati, because it is about, about to join the Ganga, or it has joined Ganga, it also becomes Ganga. So, I am the Ratyodaka, that is Gangodaka. So, <laughs> so, that was the precedent in the Shastras we have, that even people with uh, lesser age, experience and uh, knowledge can write about. But there is nothing less about Acharya Vachaspati Mishra, but I am just taking it as an example for myself. That let like my words about the Shastra written by the great Acharya Mahadevanji, so it will also become Ganga. So I have no problem, and that gave me the audacity to be present here and then uh, share my thoughts on uh, uh, the great views of. And one more thing, not only from the Shankara Sampradaya, from also the Ramanuja Sampradaya, I remembered another precedent in this regard. Uh, many of you might have heard that story also. That. Uh, when Ramanuja Acharya, he lived how many years? 120 years he lived. Such a great Acharya, Purna Ayuhu. 
Satayu Purushaha, even beyond that, 120 years he lived. So once he was walking with his parivar in Sri Ranga, and then some young children were playing on the ground in the mud. And uh, today is Vaikuntha Ekadashi. So they drew the picture of Bhagavan Narayana Piruman, and then they did all the puja was their game. A puja was their game, just like uh, the children play that king and the servant game. Similarly, those children, because of the ambience there in the Sri Ranga, they were playing puja game. So someone was doing the Alankara. Alankara is also made up of Murtika, mud. And then someone was doing the Naivedyam. That Naivedyam is also mud only. So then, uh, the, the right occasion of distribution of prasada. What is that prasada? Mud. mud. Then what happens? Uh, that small boy gave the prasada to Rama. Rama. What did he do? Hey, see, this is just the... No. Even the bhavana of the child to or that expresses his devotion to Bhagavan Narayana. And so he equally respected and accepted it. So great acharyas will accept even mud that is coming out here. So hence all these... <laughs> so all these gave me enough audacity to speak something about uh, the words of uh, or the, the work of lifetime work as Saumya mentioned 50, 50 years more than this thing so devotion and dedication to our Sanatana Dharma so more than I expressing any thought it is it is the assignment that is given to us to do more Swadhyaya on Bhagavad Gita because uh, study of the Shastras are never ending uh, I have heard uh, in one of the lectures or uh, Acharya Manitravya Shastri ji, he came to our Gurukula. There he said, oh, after all the examination, everything is over. He finally said, oh, now we have completed Bhagavad Gita. Can you close the Bhagavad Gita book and go away? No. Adhamam Dasha Chintanam. Means, uh, even if you study the text for 10 times of Bhagavad Gita, with the meaning, with the commentary, everything, for 10 times, it is still Adhamam. Then think of Madhyamam. And then think of Uttam. So hence, so it was a reminder to us that not enough, you, you start giving lectures, not enough, go back and study Bhagavad Gita in a newer light and in a, in a way that is applicable to the contemporary society and its needs. So I focused more upon uh, when uh, the, uh, the invite came. So I looked into this book, Timeless Gita and Endless Bliss. Actually the first part of it was I could uh, look at. The second part is entirely a surprise to me and a blessing to me. So I will study. Uh, so this second part is about divinity. So here we have uh, four divisions, uh, four major topics as mentioned here. The divine nature, bhakti and bhakta, our sojourn in the universe and comprehending the divinity. So it is all about divinity. And I am part of this yoga spirituality division. So spirituality or connecting to the divinity is also now currently being seen as a uh, modality of health and wellness. See, divinity is not merely, of course it is, an aspect of bhakti, shraddha, our belief, etc. Divinity, spirituality is also a modality for health and well-being. That's what we are doing there at uh, Sriyasa University, trying to see how the yajnas, homas and the puja vidhana, all this also constitute or uh, contribute to our health and well-being. And this has been documented very well in Patanjali Yoga Sutra. See, while in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, we see when, whenever people speak about Patanjali Yoga Sutra, what is the central aspect? Yoga Siddha Vritti Nirodha. What else? Patanjali Asana. Yoga Sutra Asana. Asana. Patanjali Yoga Sutra, any idea? Pranayam, yes. So these are the predominant ideas that come out of Patanjali Yoga Sutra while discussing about Asana, while discussing about Pranayama or other eight limbs of uh, Yoga, she has just taken up one section and finished it up and done it. In the, among the 195 sutras, if Asana is taken up, it is discussed in one context and she leaves it there. Pranayama, discusses and in three or four sutras it is done but only the concept of Ishwara Pranidhana it appears thrice in three different parts of the text in the first chapter we have Ishwara Pranidhana Dva a standalone method to attain Samadhi 
in the first chapter. In the second chapter, so three major approaches to attain Chitta Vritti Nirodha is spoken by Patanjali. So in the first chapter, Ishwara Pranidhana, you do Abhyasa Vairagya, etc., etc., not, not possible. Then take recourse to Ishwara Pranidhana. Pranidhana is Bhakti Vishesha. Surrender to Bhagavan so that you can by that also achieve the ends of yoga. And then the second chapter, Kriya Yoga is for the Madhyamadhika. Abhyasa Vairagya is for the Uttamadhikari. Kriya Yoga is for the Madhyamadhikari in that context also. Tapas, Swadhyaya, Ishwara Pranidhana. So for the Uttamadhikari also, Ishwara Pranidhana. For the Madhyamadhikari, Kriya Yoga, there also Ishwara Pranidhana. And then for the beginner, oh no. So the first one is a Samahita Chitta, a settled mind. For the second level is a Vyuthita Chitta, means a disturbed or outward going mind. And then Atanga Yoga actually comes for Tatopi Vyuthita Chitta. More distracted mind, more agitated mind. For them Atanga Yoga is given. There also Ishwara Pranidhana. So you can see Ishwara Pranidhana is the pervasive technique. In the Yoga Sutra, this point is missed out. And so Yoga is secularized. <laughs> this is what is considered as Yoga. Whereas spirituality, connect to the divinity, is more integral to Yoga than most other uh, approaches. And hence uh, this volume on uh, divinity is very very relevant, especially in the context of Yoga, where Yoga has caught the imagination of the entire humanity. So this will give us clarity. See, only with the clarity, we can practice with confidence. So it is not that uh, we just have some devotion to the divinity, but what is devotion? What are the approaches to devotion? What are all the qualities? Am I just uh, patram pushpam phalam toyam? Is it only offering all this? Is only divinity? No. Yasman no dvijate lokaha, lokam no dvijate chayaha, harsha harsha bhayo dvege, mukto yas sacha me priya. So Bhagavan gives you so many other qualities. It is not merely, yes, of course you have to come to the temple or have the Bhagavad Aradhana in your own specified way. But along with that, you should also cultivate so many qualities which are captured under Yamaniya. So hence, divinity, spirituality is a, is, is a comprehensive topic. And it, it, just like it caters to Amutra, means for the, the realization, for Iha also, for the well-being, for now and here also, we need this Ishwara Pranidhana. And hence, this book on divinity is all the more important for people like us who are working in the field of yoga. And yes, of course, for everyone who wants to connect with the divinity in a better way. So for that, this text will give a lot of clarity. And actually, what I studied was the first volume just I prepared on the humanity. See, actually, um, the 16th chapter is the chapter that I like most in Bhagavad Gita. It is Daivasura Sampad Vibhaga Yoga. <laughs> and I, 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 I had given a couple of talks on that. So I, I give the talk or the title of the chapter that I give is, while it is clearly mentioned as the clarification or the classification of Daivi and Asuri Sampad there, but I would like to put it this way. I gave a couple of talks also in that, this thing from uh, humanity to divinity. So how humanity can be taken to the level of divinity. So while the second volume speaks about divinity, how to connect better with the divinity, the first volume is about humanity. So how human beings can organize themselves better so that they can receive the blessings or the connect with the divinity in a better manner. So hence uh, the first uh, uh, volume speaks about, uh, there are five chapters in the first volume that I studied with great intent. The managing oneself is mentioned in the first chapter and then the second part is about mind management. The third chapter is about building superior knowledge of life skills. And the fourth chapter is our approach to work. The fifth chapter is larger meaning of life. So this is all about humanity. So how can we nurture our humanity better? And then we graduate to connecting with the divinity better. So 
while looking at the first volume, at every stage, I could see that this is not a mere study of Bhagavad Gita only. It is uh, having Bhagavad Gita Vyajena Samadra Sanatana Dharmasya Sarah. So, for example, in the first, and there is also a beautiful progression in, uh, in, the, in the first chapter, uh, means the Shastric framework I could see. First is Indriya Vyaha Param Manaha uh, Manasastu Para Buddhihi Buddhe Ratma Mahan Paraha, and then from Buddhi comes our uh, uh, the Kartritva, and then to the goal of life. So, Indriya. With, the, with regard to the first chapter on the concept of Indriya Nigraha, controlling the senses, regulation of the senses, while I was reading through the contents of the chapter, I was reminded of a shloka from Viveka Chudamani. That is, Shabda Dhidhi Pancha Bhideva Pancha Panchatva Mahapu Sabunena Vatha Kuranga Matanga Matanga Meena Brinda Anara Pancha Bhiranchi Takkin. I was not, I had not gone into the text. I was still looking into the content. This shloka flashed in my mind, which is from uh, Vireka Chudaman, where Indriya Nigraha is very important for human beings because every other being, they have one weakness in one sense organ, by that their life ends. Uh, Kuranga, Kuranga, just I'll give one or two examples. Kuranga is uh, the deer and uh, its weakness, according to that shloka of Acharya Shankara, is in sound. When it, when the, when the hunter plays a beautiful music, then it gets attracted and then it is lured and killed. So its weakness, its a fatal weakness, the fatal weakness of deer is in the sense of hearing. And then uh, the elephant, elephant, so matanga, so what is its uh, weakness is the sense of touch. How do they capture the mighty elephant? They will tie a she elephant and then dig a big pit and then attracted by the, the uh, she elephant, this elephant comes and gets uh, uh, caught. So in this way, but otherwise elephant is very strong, otherwise a deer is not easily captured. So otherwise this other beings are very strong, but in the case of human beings, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, in all these sense organs we are extremely weak. <laughs> so hence, all the more important is starting from the regulation of the senses. So as I was looking through the content page itself, this shloka flagged and when I rolled into the pages, I saw the shloka is already given by Professor Ji. So which means, the point that I try to convey is, this book is not only about Gita, it connects with all other texts of our Shastra. So it contains Sarva Shastra Sangraha. In that sense, Viveka Chudamani is there. And as I read through other chapters also, I could see uh, the, the flow of thought. It has connections or reflections from other chapters. The next chapter is about control of the mind, regulation of the mind. There again, it's again very important. We are in a in a, in a situation of a, a Ramajanma Bhumi temple being constructed. So the great Hanuma, he went to uh, the uh, Ashokavana in search of Sita. In that context, in searching Sita, he had to look into the Antapura of Ravana. So then uh, he thinks, Anjaneya thinks, Paradaravarodhasya prasuktasya nirikshanam idam khalu mamatyartham dharmalopam karishyati. I have to peep into the Antapura of all the Ravana's wives, etc. So this is my dharma lopa. I am a brahmachari and then this is against my dharma. Then Anjaneya himself thinks about, he evaluates his own mind. Then he says that, uh, uh, he himself uh, thinks about his mind and says that, uh, ah, mano hi tu sarvesham Indriyanam pravartane shubha shubha su avasthasu tachame suvyavasthita means mind is the one which leads to sublimation, mind is the one which leads to downfall. So when he estimates his mind, no problem. My mind is stable and steady. Now he reassures such a great personality, Hanuman, who is an embodiment of Buddha, Balam, Yesho, Dhaityam, Dirbhayatvam, Arogata, Ajadyam, Vakpadatvam. He himself, in the in, in control of the mind, it is a very, very slippery 
slow. So he has to nidanich kuna. Avare nidanich kuna vendi irukkha. So hence about us. So it is. It, it, hence the control of the mind. So as I read through the contents itself, I was reminded of the Videka uh, Chudamani, Ramayana, later the Upanishadic framework. And finally, so in, in preparing our uh, self, in, in, uh, in making ourselves better human beings, uh, uh, Professor Mahadevan Ji finally says in this chapter, the larger meaning of life, as I got into that chapter looking through its content, so Dharma, the universal principle, Yajna, the cardinal principle, the immutable self within us, all this, why should I be a better human being so that I can focus, orient myself towards these three basic things, that is Yajna, and then uh, dharma and uh, atma. Yajna dana tapah karma natyajyam karyam evan. Yajna dana tapah chayva pavanani manishinam. Etanya pitu karmani sangam tekva halanicha kartavyani ti mepartha nishchitam matam uttamam. Krishna categorically says do perform yajna. So yajna is very fundamental. So, to do yajna properly, we have to be better human beings. And then a dharma, and then leading the life in the path of dharma, we have to have the control of the senses, control of the mind, all these things, dharma. And finally, not only for the iha, but also para we have to prepare. So for the atma, sakshatkara also, this is the larger purpose. So yajna, dharma, and atma sakshatkara. So these are the larger purposes for which we are working in the realm of our humanity. So, uh, uh, this again reminded me about Manush. I will wrap it up in just two minutes. Uh, this reminded me about what Manu said. Because, Yadvai tad Manu ravadat tad bheshakam. That, that's, that's the glorification of Manu that the Vedas themselves say. Whatever Manu said is a medicine. Yadvai tad Manu avadat of course, Manu has been, means just like for Bhagavad Gita, Manu has also been uh, uh, degraded or denigrated. But what he said in most other contexts is like medicine. What did he said? Aditya Vidivar Vedan, Uttram Stodpadya Dharmataha, Ishtvacha Shaktito Yajnan, Manu Moksha Niveshya. So the last three, last chapter of large purpose, it reflects the medicine like. Uh, fundamental concept of our dharma that is yajna, dharma and atma sakshatkara. So hence my final observation or humble submission is that um, being soaked in the tradition of sanatana dharma, sanatana dharma has uh, excellently expressed itself through Professor Mahadevan ji's work and uh, 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 teachings. So hence uh, the manifestation of Sanatana Dharma that we can see here and hence uh, uh, this will be a great uh, Swadhyaya Yajna to study these books and then reflect. And one final thing is that uh, recently a circular from UGC has come, Sarud also have been seen, would have seen uh, Vikasit Bharat. So it has elicited views, the UGC, United University Grants Commission is eliciting the thoughts and views of college, university students and professors of course on what is their concept of Vikasita Bharat. So we are not yet not a developing nation. From the framework of a developing nation, we have to move into the mindset of a developed nation. So the thoughts are being elicited. In that context when I was thinking about this book, so Vikasita Desha cannot happen without a Vikasita Vyakti. So without a Vikasita developed, without a developed, in, in the reverse order there is there, um, Teje Dekam Kulasyarthe, Gramasyarthe, Kulam Teje, Dramam Janapadasyarthe, Atmarthe, Putri. We have to reverse think about it. If the individual is developed, the community is developed. The community is or the village is developed. The village is developed, the, 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 the country is developed. So if the country is developed in that way, then the whole humanity becomes Krinvanto Vishwamarya. So in that sense, towards the goal of Vikasita Bharata, Vikasita Vyakti is important. In that dimension, these books all are timeless Gita and endless bliss. 
timeless endless all this is all all this is an english rendering of sanatana concept only so hence in the for a vikasita vyakti this is very important in that context it is very important and it is highly relevant that at this very crucial juncture when the prime minister is eliciting views this book has come so both for policy makers and also at an individual level the entire society can derive a lot of benefit from this very timely publication which is timeless thank you very much